Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today in this video I'm going to test the latest VTX from Foxeer, the Clear TX. In this video I'm going to go through its features, show how to set it up, and then I'm going to mount it on my Ishin Wizard TS215 and head outdoors to take it for a test flight. Inside the small bag we get in the VTX, this 6 pin connector, a 4 pin connector so if you'd like you can change the 3 pin connector for the camera and add the audio wire if your camera has a built in microphone. And finally, we get in the instructions manual. The ClearTX VTX supports 48 channels. The walk-in voltage is between 7 to 24 volts, which means you can use LiPo batteries between 2 to 6 cells. The output strength is selectable between 25 to 100 and 600 milliwatt. And in addition, when you enter the setup, it enters pit mode, which should reduce the effect of the VTX on other pilots. It uses an MM6 antenna connector, and unfortunately, it doesn't support smart audio. On the bottom of the VTX you can find its connector. The right pin is the battery plus, then the battery ground, audio in, video in, and then ground and plus 5 volts outputs for the camera. As I mentioned before, smart audio is not supported, so the only way to configure the VTX is through this push button over here. Foxeer chose to use a very elegant solution. They are using these 7 LEDs in order to display the current frequency and output strength. It's elegant because it's well protected by the heat ring that covers the entire VTX. I think that this solution is better protected than using this type of screen and it also saves some weight. The ClearTX VTX weighs 7.37 grams and its dimensions are 32.2 by 22.5 by 6.9 millimeters. In order to set it up, you will have to long press this button for 3 seconds in order to enter band selection mode. You can see that just simply short pressing this button is not going to do anything. So after you press it for 3 seconds, the green LED indicator is going to be on and the blue is off and now you can switch between all the available bands. Because now the VTX is locked, you can get up to 5. I'm going to show you how to unlock it in a minute. Then long pressing this button again for 3 seconds is going to enter the channel selection mode. You can see that the blue LED indicator is on and the green is off and you can switch between all the available channels. If you're going to choose a different band, now I'm on band 2, you won't be able to select all the channels. Depending on the version that you bind, you can see which channels are grayed out. So you can see that if you bind the US version, the low race band is grayed out. And so is channels 4, 7 and 8 on band E. And if you bind the international version, you can see that all these channels are grayed out. And if you're going to unlock it, it's going to enable you to use them. The version that I'm testing is the international version. Finally, long pressing this button for another 3 seconds is going to enter the output strength selection mode. You can see that these two LED indicators are on and because this VTX is locked, I can't switch it. So now I'm going to show you how to unlock it. So unlocking this VTX is very easy. All you have to do is long press this button for about 5 to 10 seconds. And you can see now we have this indication that indicates that now the VTX has been unlocked. So now you can see I can switch between all the available bands up to 6 and now I can also switch the output strength between 1 which stands to 25 milliwatt, 2 which stands for 200 milliwatts and 3 which stands for 600 milliwatts. In case you're wondering it doesn't matter which version you're getting once you unlock the VTX all the frequencies are going to be available and also the different output modes. According to Foxeer up to 8 pilots can fly simultaneously using these VTXs. Unfortunately I won't be able to test it out. In addition I won't be able to measure the output strength but I've got the Immersion LC RF Power V2 on its way. So hopefully on the next time I'm going to review a VTX I will be able to measure it up. The next thing I'm going to do is to connect the clear TX to my Ishin Wizard TS215 quadcopter and then I'm going to head outdoors and I'm also going to test this VTX on different output strength modes using the 5860 frequency. As for an antenna, I'm going to use the Foxeer Lollipop antenna. I'm not going to use this one with the MM6 connector. I'm going to use this one with the SMA connector just because I've got the extension cable already wired up. So I'm looking forward to test this VTX out. I do hope and believe that Foxeer are going to release a version with a smart audio option because it makes our life easier and it also becomes pretty standard. I hope you will enjoy the rest of this video. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to ask it in the comments section down below. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you like this video and consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the notification bell if you're not already subscribed. See you in my next videos and goodbye.